welcome Mariam and Ilya. Hello. Hi. So congratulations um, on the film. We, I know you're days away from the uh, theatrical release, um, but or you've gotten some wonderful early notices. The Elliott Times has called this required viewing and others have noted that this is just not your generic biopic. Um, so we are very excited to hear from you uh, as to the making of this film and what it was like to, to do this project um, together and with Rita. So let's start at the beginning um, and I'll start with you, Mariam. How did you come about this or why did you wanna make this documentary? So Brent Miller, who's the producer of the show One Day at a Time, um, that's when he met um, Rita Moreno and realized that there was no documentary on her. He had just finished doing a documentary on the life of um, his, his um, boss, Norman Lear for PBS American Masters. And so he wanted to make a documentary on Rita also for PBS American Masters. And it took him about a year to convince Rita on doing this documentary. And after that, he was looking for directors and I was one of the persons who pitched an idea to direct the documentary and that's how it came about. Um, so both of you have done, um, as I said, documentaries together before. And I was wondering, um, I, I know Mary, and this will be for both of you, but you said in, um, you've said that you, started um, with a set uh, of questions in your first interview with Rita that you wanted to ask, that as she started to talk and tell her story, something changed. And I think you realized that this was possibly a story bigger than Rita. Yes, I always, before interviewing her, we already had um, some themes that we wanted to touch and that we wanted to be part of the documentary, but um, one thing is to have that in paper and, and not know if that's going to be possible. And it wasn't until my first interview, which was the, the light interview that I was going to make to her, which was basically going through her entire career and all, all of her um, awards, etc. And she was already very open, telling me things that touched me a lot because were a lot of things that I myself had gone through as a woman, as a Latina in Hollywood of prejudice, of discrimination. And that's when I realized that she was like me or I was like her and she was like everyone else, like every woman out there, not just Latinas or not just immigrants, but every woman out there. And so to me, it was important that her documentary was in a way a documentary that through her experience, we would understand what it means to be a woman in the United States in that seven year career of her life. Elia, did you wanna add something to that? Yeah, that not, not just a woman, but, uh, but uh, 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 an immigrant and, uh, and a Puerto Rican struggling, um, uh, in times that were difficult in New York too, um, especially in New York. So, so yeah, she gave us the um, I, I, the story, as you said, um, was definitely bigger than than than, than just no idea that made it through struggles. It was a it was a great example of telling all of these other um, issues that. Um, citizens of other countries living in the United States go through. I, I think um, that came very clear. And I, one of the things, the devices that you used uh, to, that I thought were, that was so powerful was the, the paper doll motif. And I wanted to know how you um, came up with that and when did you come up with that in the project? Because as women, we do, you know, all women um, contort themselves uh, to kind of fit the bill and, and fit the, the post as it was. So um, it was very powerful. So tell us about that. 
that was, that was part of my pitch. And, and I guess it's because I was reading a lot about her always being someone else, always um, pleasing everybody else from her very childhood with her mom, dressing her up and her performing, performing for her grandfather all the way through her career. She's been always putting a dress on to become someone else. And that's what, to me, that little girl, that paper doll represents is that neutral person who becomes whoever you want her to become depending on what she's wearing. And the paper per se is also showing how fragile she could be and how her story and herself is a fragile person as well. And, and so we see that paper doll changing throughout the documentary until the end, until 10 years uh, ago, she finally became herself. She finally is being herself and not trying to be someone else um, he, hiding in a facade behind those dresses. So that's where it came from. Yeah, it was a beautiful effect and really followed her story. And at the end when she is just Rita was, uh, was an incredible moment. Um, so speaking of Rita, when you, when you do a documentary with a person who is alive um, and you followed, you followed uh, both of you followed her for a year with, I don't know, over 80 hours of footage. Um, how do you win her? How did you win her trust? And did your relationship change? Oh, definitely it changed, yeah. Um, she's, um, Rita's, Rita's, you know, as she's lived a lot in, and not only in years, but in experiences. So she's not someone that's um, easy to, to, you know, become friends with at first because she's lived a lot. So she's um, a little guided, I would say. But I think it was easy in the sense that she saw these two Puerto Ricans and, and Puerto Rican women like by her and she felt connected in the way um, we talk about this all the time. It's interesting that you make that question because we saw the change um, and there was this very um, like, like, emotional experience for us and it is that um when we were doing we did um like it was five days of interviews i think four or five days of interviews at her house in different um uh, days and uh, different months and the last um interview we were there for a couple of days because we were filming other things in her house and the very last day we finished her interview earlier early in the day like uh, i don't know midday um, but then we kept on filming um, and we, so we said bye and she was going to leave and she usually goes to bed early, you know, and, and she, does, you, she, she, would, she would used to go to bed and we would leave later. That day, she knew it was the last day and we would speak Spanish because some other crew was Puerto Rican as well. And she stayed with the TV muted and she stayed sitting there till the very last minute that we finished and we, Maria and I and our colleagues talked about her absorbing the last minutes of people, Puerto Rican people speaking Spanish at her house. So I think that was, a, that was an important aspect of winning her over and many conversations and the trust in Maria's dreams that she proposed and the fact that she loves and, and trusts very much Brent Miller, the producer. So all of those um, aspects, I think, helped. She's, she's that kind of person. And, and, and Mariam, did, you know, I know you became very, um, you had a, a very personal connection too, and that sort of changed you as well. Um, can you talk about that? Um, as you know, you saw yourself reflected and, and vice versa and what happens when you get so close to um, your subject? Um, it, I think it, it helped me um, in many ways. I, I, I now say that my life is before Rita Moreno and after meeting Rita Moreno because 
I learned a lot from her. So many things that have to do with um, how you are in terms of how you carry yourself in life, no? And I saw myself so much in her that um, it helped me ask her the questions that I asked her because it came from my perspective, from what I was going through at the moment. And she was answering them as someone who wanted me to understand and to, to not um, go through the same pain that she went through. And so I think um, she's saying that to me, but she's saying that to the whole audience that is watching this documentary because she doesn't want everyone to go through all the pain that she went through. Um, but it's something that I, I take with me is when she talks about therapy and, and, and although um, she, she's very open about it and, and she, told, she told us that so many times during, during all the interviews that we did to her that I right away, I applied it. Right away, I told her, I'm going to do therapy from now on. And I did. So um, I honestly think that her story is very inspiring in many ways, especially in, pers in, in personal ways, because you learn how important it, it is to be self-aware and to wanting to always become a better human being for the better of everything else that you do in your career or not because whenever you're fine inside, you're gonna do great jobs and, and have better opportunities. Yeah, I, I was very, uh, I, think, I think people will be taken by her honesty about you know, therapy, but also her honesty about her story um, that I, you know, is, is, is brutal at times you know, in all honesty, but is also incredibly inspiring at others. Um, and she has some wonderful, uh, words that she tells herself and to, you know, just keep getting up. And, uh, but uh, I think people will appreciate that honesty and for you to get it out of her, um, because Ilya, as you said, she was kind of a little bit guarded at first. Um, so what did, um, so you did, you, it took a year, you had a lot of footage was there something you left out that you wished you could have put in or is there, you know, is there another hour here? That, I'm sure there is another hour here, but, or what would that hour be? There is more than an hour. We have <laughs> eight hours of material um, that we narrow it down to 90 minutes. Um, but I think the whole essence of what we wanted to show with the documentary which to me was that when, when you finish watching, you can say, oh yeah, I know Rita Moreno now. I know her. I don't know necessarily just her career, but I can, I can say that I know her as a person. And that's what we wanted to accomplish is for you to come out of the theater knowing this woman in, with her vulnerabilities, but, but also through her great moments in her career. And so that's there, but there's definitely a lot of things that we didn't include, so many things. One in particular for me was that she, for her it was really tough that she never saw her little brother ever again. And I would have wanted to talk more about that. We have it, we just don't have it in the, in the documentary, but that's something I really wanted to talk more about. Yeah, I um, also in her book she talks. I you know her memoir. It's um, it was a very hard beginning um, for her to come here and uh, leave her family behind in search of, as she keeps putting in air quotes, the American dream. Right. So um, and you know Ilya, I think also uh, the both of you talk about the that, that this film really made you think about the American dream. You know. Uh, you know, and it's, and it's truth or not. And uh, I don't know how you come out of it at the moment right now. Uh, yeah. But I think that one of the, one of the, I think of the, of the good things about this project and that really makes me proud is that even though that's still true, that that American dream needs to be questioned in, in the way of 
achieving it. At the same time, I think there's hope. And I think that for by telling stories like this, we give, um, we give people in the same situation of, as Rita tools to, to be able to accomplish struggles and, and see them in a different way. So even though I, I think we have a, a, long, a long run to, 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 a long road to run still in, in achieving a, a, a racism and prejudice and discrimination and, and inequities for women and for Hispanics, even though that's still very real uh, and it's been real for too long, I think there's hope. And, and that's how I'd like to see it. So, so, so yeah, I think people can see, still achieve, you know, becoming um, successful. Uh, I wouldn't call it the American dream, but becoming just, you know, uh, normal, uh, regular uh, human beings that achieve success without having to be a man or a white man in the United States. Maram, did you want to add to that, or I, I think this is a, this what Rita um, really, as you said, the tools is is a being either feeling and perceived as less than, and so she, I think, during the film, at least for me, I think that's a great word. She almost gives you the tools to, um, you know, pick yourself up. I don't know if you agree, Maram, but that's that's what I, I, you know, that's I'm, I'm curious. Yes, and I think the, the most important tool that she talks about is therapy. Yeah. That's how she's been able to go through all the things yeah. that she went through. And I think that's um, important to know because, again, questioning the American dream. Yes, she, the American dream um, is that opportunity um, that she was able to become who she is, but it comes with a lot of sacrifice. It comes with a lot of suffering. It comes with, it's not just beautiful and, and perfect. It, it has a lot of darkness in it, this American dream. Um, and it's important to know that too and to talk about that too, because it's, it's not like we think it is. It's not perfect at all. And so um, the fact that she did therapy, I think it's what made her um, being able to be successful with this American dream. Hmm. That's, that's so fascinating. And um, the, the way you talk, you know, how Rita shows us this, this evolution, how you show us Rita's evolution as a person um, to uh, be who she wants to be, to, you know, as with, you know, her relationship with her, her husband, Lenny, um, and really admitting to that um, took such guts um and to do it with you in this film uh, it uh i think i had there was one favorite line which i think it was something like you know i really love being alone um or it's great to live especially alone especially when you love the one you live with um, and that's, <laughs> um so thank you for kind of weaving that in um so uh, just a couple more questions one is um uh, so when when you first had to show it to Rita, did you have let her watch it alone? Did you like give her a really rough cut? Sort of how does that process work? We showed it to her um, back in December for um, for fact checking, basically. The it was the final cut, but for fact, uh, fact checking purposes. We um, put it in a in a small theater in, in uh, San Francisco in Berkeley with um, her daughter, her manager, uh, one of the um, of the person, the people we interviewed, Marianne, Brent, and I. Um, and it was nerve wracking <laughs> for us. It was it was beautiful, and we really wanted to do it, and we were excited about it. But we were really nervous, especially you talked about the Lenny, the Lenny topic was one of the topics I was personally very nervous about, like especially with Fernanda, because for Rita, that's her truth, and she's confident and and free enough at this point to say it, knowing that it will hurt some people, 
but that it's her truth and she needs to be um, truthful. But for us, you know, it's like you want to be, you know, you're touching with something we discussed and I didn't like really get to that moment when we were showing her the film. It's like, we were talking about their lives, you know, it's like, for us, it's Rita and it's up there and it's this icon. And we know we're talking about a human being and a, and a human being that's alive. But for them, it's their life, you know, it's their family life. So, so yeah, that was, that was beautiful, but it was, it was intense. And, and they received it in a very, very nice way. Rita, Rita was very emotional about it. Lauren, were you uh, butterflies in your stomach or? I was actually very excited to show it to her because I really wanted to know what she thinks of the art artistic part of it because I think we have many things in common or we have a, a similar taste with things. And I really wanted to know what she, what was her take on it. I also convinced my, myself in knowing that I wasn't trying to please Rita Moreno with this documentary because this documentary wasn't for her to please, but it was for an audience that I wanted to show. So I kept talking to myself and thinking, well, if she doesn't like it, there's nothing I can do because it's not for her, it's for everyone else. But the fact that she really loved it and that Fernanda did too and her manager and her best friend, that of course was a big relief for me and, and, and made me more sure of the project that I wanted to do and more sure of the decisions I, I made throughout because there were really tough decisions that we made without asking her and we would put ourselves in her shoes. And sometimes I really wanted to call her and say, hey, I wanna put this, but everybody's saying that this is too tough for you to, to have it. And we never did that, but I think she's very happy with the, with the final project. So I am too. Well, that's, thank you for giving us that window into sort of <clears throat> your process. And, and when you do um, <clears throat> have a subject who is alive um, to be able to keep your artistic vision, but you're also having this person um, who's going to watch it and to make those, um, I, I don't know if everyone knows the kind of decisions a filmmaker and a documentarian has to do when that person is alive is, you can make them an icon, you can make it truly personal. And so how, that, you know, walking that line, I think um, is, is very hard, but um, <clears throat> it's, it's very interesting to hear you talk about that, that process. Um, and um, something when you, when, if one watches it again, to come from that lens, um, it'll, it's, I think it'll be even a different film to, to watch. Uh, so finally, I mean, you've, you've, we've talked about so many issues about Rita as a person, Rita as a, um, you know, overcoming so much that is, is still happening today to, to women, to Latinx women, black women. Um, what, what is your hope for this film in terms of, um, you know, impact, I guess, um, because she's incredibly inspirational. And like you said, she, she's given us the tools, but you know, what, what are your, your big hopes and dreams for this film? Well, for me, I want audience to feel inspired by her and to find strength in her story, to, to do what they want to do with their life and to continue reaching their goals. Um, and I think that's my, my take on her. And whenever I feel that something is really hard, I think of her and I get that strength. So that's, that's what I want people when they watch it to, to take out, to get out of the theater and be like, let's go, let's do this. I have all the strength now because Rita gave me the tools or, and because if she can do it, I can do it. So that's what I want. For people to have. And Ilya, as a producer, what do you, what's your, your wish? 
For me, it's that too, obviously, that people uh, connect and feel connected to her story and with her humanity. I think that one of the great things um, is to see that someone so human with such um, flaws, but at the same time, so many qualities can achieve anything. So I think that, you know, but also as a producer, I really wish this documentary shows people um, that Puerto Ricans and, and women can tell like wonderful stories and can make um, these kind of films of various, various topics and, and make a film that it's worth watching, you know? Yeah, it's, um, I, I, I think, uh she's inspiring as a woman, she's inspiring as a Puerto Rican woman in so many ways now and, and was a trailblazer. And we are so thankful, actually thankful and grateful that you guys have brought this to us. It's an amazing career. It's an amazing, wonderful thing that you have done um, to portray her and for us to learn from. So I thank you both for doing this and um, I wish you so much luck with the film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.